Welcome to our first in a series of four Wednesday broadcasts of interesting books that are related to our month-long theme of both our stewardship campaign and our worship on simplicity. Today I'll be focusing on the life-changing magic of tidying up the Japanese art of decluttering and organizing a long-standing New York Times bestseller. First, let me begin by saying that uh, it's often dangerous to go out to eat with people. And what I mean by that is, um, having had dinner with some friends, they began a discussion about this great book that they were reading about tidying up the one I just... Uh, shared with you. And I thought, well, you know, it sounds kind of interesting. And a couple of them claimed it was really life changing for them. So I thought I'd try and read the book myself. It kind of goes back to that idea that, you know, Jesus, he had dinner with people and it changed their lives. And that was some dinner conversation. And so was this one, because that book really has changed my life and the life of our family and our household. So let me begin with some statements by Maria Kundo, who wrote the book. She said, storage experts are hoarders. And she said, the key to tidying up is really not to sort by location and discard. Um, like so many of us do, we approach the family room and then we go on to the living room, but rather by category. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. And that you have to do two things. You have to touch everything you're either deciding to keep or discard. And when you touch it, you must ask yourself, does this bring me joy? If the answer is yes, it sparks joy in you, you keep it. If the answer is no, you then give it away or sell it. Let me just say we made a lot of money on our flea market that we had after we tidied up our whole house. So what do we choose to keep and what do we choose to give away? She says that we must start by discarding what we don't want to keep and then decide where to store and put the things we do want to keep, organize that space. She said, tidying is a special event within a short space of time. I think for our household, it took us uh, three weeks, roughly three weekends. Um, and that tidying up should not be an everyday event. Many of us are used to doing that, but she says, once you tidy up as a special event, then you don't really need to tidy up on a daily basis. And a year and a half later into this process and having our house organized in this way, we don't do daily tidying up. Um, she says that there needs to be by category first and not at all by location. This is the order she gives. Clothing. She says you start with your clothing, clothing and not with the seasonal clothes that you're currently wearing. But you take all your clothes and you either literally lay them all over your bed or lay them all over the floor. That means this season's clothes, not this season's clothes. That means shoes, that means bags, that means scarves, that means pants, tops, dresses, suits, coats, all your clothing you put in one place. You must touch every item. And then you say, does this bring me joy? Um, I think between the two of us um, in our household, we discarded 28 bags of clothing. And I'm both proud to say that and, and embarrassed to say that I kept so much clothing that didn't bring me joy. Now I go through my drawers or into my closet and everything there I love and everything there I wear. So she also does a radical thing that really changed things for us and that was the simple art of folding instead of hanging. So you literally fold all of your items of clothing except like suits or dresses or skirts which tend not to fold as well. And you fold them in a rectangle shape and then you stack them up in your drawer this way, vertically, not horizontally this way. That way she says, it's kinder on the clothes, it's not as much weight on them, but also it allows you constantly to see everything that's in your drawer and therefore you wear them more often. 
She then says, your next task is to go uh, through your books. <laughs> this happens to be a, a book that does bring me great joy. It's all about clouds. It wouldn't be in everybody's joy-filled library, but it is mine. She says, you must take all your books from all the locations in your house and put them on the floor. And then you, again, must touch everyone and say, does this bring me joy? I have to say, we went from five bookcases to one. And I don't miss a single book I gave away. And if I ever wanted to read that book again, I could sure borrow it from the library. The other thing that I think chokes most households, I know it did ours as well, is the whole issue of filing uh, papers. What do we do with papers? Um, she says there should be only three categories of papers in your house. Those currently in use, those needed for a limited time, and those that must be kept indefinitely. You limit your paperwork to one spot only, not throughout the house. If you're like what I used to be, um, I had them all over. Little pile here, little pile there. Um, and then you only really need to keep two kinds of folders. Paperwork and folders that say frequently used and infrequently used. Now, I don't know about you, but I had actually three file cabinets. Now I'm down to two drawers. <laughs> and I spent an inordinate amount of time. Now, what should I file this under? And then to never go back in and look at those files. Another great hint that she gave is, why are we saving owner's manuals? Most of those you can get online, and if not, you can call the company, and if you need something, and ask for it. We had one whole file drawer that was nothing but owner's manuals. Next, clothing, books what she would call miscellaneous. That's your music, your makeup, your accessories, the electrical, the household supplies, the kitchen goods. We literally went by category throughout the house, got all those items together in one place that were of that category. Um, and we went through, touched each one. Does it bring me joy? Does it spark joy? She suggests that when you go about your discarding and make it that special event, um, rather than a daily tidying up, uh, you do so in a quiet space and you don't even play music because this takes a level of concentration that you start early in the morning rather than midday or late day when you might be tired. So you've gone through miscellaneous. Then she talks about going through mementos. Those are the last. I know we had inherited dishes from family and some special things that are multiple generations. And I have to say, I held on to most of those, but even some of them I gave away. The china I grew up with, the average dinnerware that got handed down to me from my mother's. I held on to the plate and it was mom's joy, but it wasn't mine. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, let's say you've been through all, everything, the clothing, the books, the papers, the miscellaneous, the mementos. Now it's a question about where do you store the things you've decided to keep. She talks about in storage, there are only two rules. I love it. Two rules. All items of the same type in the same place and don't scatter your storage place. So one person in the household stores their stuff in that space. Another person stores it in another space. Um, she talks about when we have clutter, there's really only two possible reasons for it. The first is it's too much effort required to put things away. Or it's unclear about where things belong. When you begin discarding, you will have more space than you ever had before. It will be easy to put things away. My unpacking for the laundry after I do it is as simple as just folding it up in a rectangle shape and bang, I know exactly what drawer it goes in because that's the space for it. And there's room in there. She says the second thing is we're not clear where it belongs. Well, everything has its place. Your papers have its place. Your kitchen goods have their place. Your clothing has its specific place. When we do these things such as discarding and storing that which brings us joy, we then find our household is a place where only we are surrounded by the things we love. 
My whole life I've been surrounded by a lot of things, but only now in the last year and a half have I been surrounded truly only by those things that I love. She's known to say that your life begins when you put your house in order. I take for example, we had more Christmas stuff than I care to admit. So when we finally pared that down, we had so much more space in our basement. Matter of fact, the workbench that had been used to store all those Christmas items on top was now nothing more than empty. It became my art space, my art studio. And in the last year and a half, I have, cor um, have created 14 items of artwork on that workbench that I would not have been able to create because it was so filled with stuff. So our, real, our life does really begin when we put our house in order. When we pare down to be able to handle properly what we have, we renew and revitalize our relationship with our belongings because we have so much it's hard to interact with all your belongings but when you have less and those things that you do have bring you great joy and they spark joy within you you then have a new rapport a new connection a new relationship with your belongings and last but not least let me end with this through the process of selecting only those things that inspire joy, you and I can identify precisely what we love and what we really need. May you find joy as you too dare to go ahead and look at what you have, to let it go, discard what doesn't bring you joy, and to keep those things that are special and precious to you and bring you great joy. That then is the beginning of a new life. Take it from me. I know it to be true. Stay tuned for next week's posting on the Simple Living for St. James Church.